In recent years, the LGBTQ community has fought hard for more representation. Slowly but surely, characters from that community are getting more screen time in shows. And while it's not as if the struggle is over, it's important to recognize just how far we've come. Just over two decades ago, this simply wasn't done. There may have been a handful of gay characters on TV, but they weren't series leads. And these portrayals could be stereotypical and harmful, like how all gay men are depicted as feminine, flamboyant, and promiscuous, for example. Coming out was such a massive controversy that when Ellen DeGeneres and her character, Ellen Morgan did so, she faced backlash for it. The 90s ABC sitcom Ellen faced religious groups calling for their boycott, JCPenney and Chrysler pulling ads from the show's time slot, and Ellen claims that she became the butt of everyone's jokes. But those of you that are a part of the LGBTQ community know just how important this moment was and how crucial it is to have stories like this told. Acceptance and changing people's mind doesn't come all at once. Ellen literally made history in the fight for gay rights. An op-ed in the New York Times shortly after she came out said, "'Despite what has been said about Sweeps Week and a corporate publicity spin for a show that was in a ratings plummet, the program did what every acknowledged and closeted gay and lesbian American needed. It affirmed us, acknowledged the strains that being gay can cause and described the feelings of relief we feel upon coming out to family and friends. Thank you, Ellen, you have opened the doors for millions of Americans.' Ellen really and truly did inspire people. President Obama awarded her the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2016, reminding the country of her courageous act, stating that Ellen was full of kindness and light. Various celebrities like singer Brandi Carlisle have said that Ellen's coming out moment inspired them too. For example, Carlisle identifies as queer, but she grew up in a religious household. She had to hide her sexual orientation from her family. Plus, due to trauma around public accountability within her faith, she wasn't permitted to sing or even be baptized at her church. Carlisle told Ellen, quote, "'What you did for me and people like us when you came out was so huge for me in my life. You were the first gay person I'd ever met. To me, you were what it means. And I wasn't going to stay in the closet after that.'" Jane Lynch has also stated that Ellen was one of the reasons she came out, explaining that Ellen blazed a trail for her. There really is no understating the massive impact of Ellen's actions here. Her bravery and courage inspired so many people to just be themselves. And I'm sure that many young people were able to look to Ellen as an idol, as someone that proved you shouldn't be afraid to be yourself. In 2001, she gained further respect when she hosted the Emmy Awards. The show was rescheduled after the tragic events of September 11th that year, but when it aired, Ellen famously stated, quote, "'What would bug the Taliban more "'than seeing a gay woman in a suit surrounded by Jews?' This opening line went viral and she briefly seemed to lift the spirits of a country in mourning. Soon she had her own talk show named For Her, which became wildly successful in the following years. She signed off every episode with words, "'Be kind,' gaining the role of the be kind lady and the respect of those around her." She also played Dory on Finding Nemo around that time, further putting her name into the spotlight. Ellen seemed to be everything that we want from celebrities, kind, generous, funny, trailblazing, and advocates. What more could you ask for? Well, in the case of Ellen, honesty. Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today, as you've probably guessed, we're going to be talking about Ellen DeGeneres. 2020 brought out the worst in so many of us, including people that may be especially kind. However, for those that actually worked for Ellen on her show, their treatment was a bitter pill to swallow during the pandemic. They apparently didn't receive written communication about their hours or pay and learned via social media, no less, that an outside non-union tech company had been hired to help DeGeneres film her show remotely from home. Talk about a huge slap in the face. Her workers were eventually told they'd get a 60% pay cut, all while this outside tech company still made money just fine. And no, it's not as if Warner Bros. couldn't have afforded to pay their stage crew during this time. They're Warner Bros. first of all. But Ellen herself has a deal that's worth about $50 million per year. It simply wasn't important enough for these executives to keep paying their stage crew. Now, you can say that this isn't Ellen's responsibility and you wouldn't be wrong. It's not Ellen's job to make sure her stage crew is paid. She doesn't run payroll. She doesn't write their contracts. Other people do that for her. But this is where public perception comes into play. Jimmy Kimmel reportedly paid people out of his own pockets during the first part of the shutdown. And he doesn't have a tagline of be kind to one another. So while Ellen isn't obligated to give people her money, it felt strange and even hypocritical that she wouldn't help. 
Personally, I believe that if Ellen had spoken out and said, I'm really disappointed with how Warner Bros is treating my stage crew, that would have changed things. I'm sure there's something that doesn't allow her to say those specific words or disparage the company, but to sit by and do nothing, I don't, I don't know about that. It didn't sit right with me and it didn't sit right with a lot of people. And that certainly doesn't help when she made a tone deaf joke stating, one thing that I've learned from being in quarantine is that this is like being in jail. It's mostly because I've been wearing the same clothes for 10 days and everyone here is gay. But annoyance from the public turned to condemnation as the world learned that the be kind icon, this inspiration, was someone completely different behind the set of her program. Employees spoke out claiming that they were fired for taking medical leave after a suicide attempt, or in some cases, because of a car accident and to attend funerals. It's not as if any of this time taken off was selfish, it's literally health and family emergencies, but that seemingly didn't matter. The employee that attempted to take their own life told BuzzFeed News, you'd think that if someone just tried to kill themselves, you don't want to add any more stress to their lives. Some of the show producers talk openly in public about addiction and mental health awareness, but they're the reason there's a stigma. They definitely don't practice what they preach with the be kind mantra. BuzzFeed News says that four other employees and medical records back up these claims. Another former employee also alleged that she created a GoFundMe for medical expenses that weren't covered by her job on The Ellen Show only for the Ellen program to demand she remove it. They allegedly claimed that it made them look bad. And clearly, if they were worried about her medical expenses, they could have just, you know, paid for them. Instead, the program seemed far more concerned with their appearances while behind closed doors, they told their workers that they'd never find anything better than this. And as a very brief aside, while I find it very iffy about BuzzFeed as a source here, some of the employees spoke with them, so I really didn't have a choice but to use their article because they were the direct source. Employees also have accused executives of racial discrimination with one black former employee claiming that she was told, I hope we don't get confused by a senior executive, referencing that two black employees had box braids at the time. A main writer also told her quote, I'm sorry, I only know the names of white people who work here. And her coworkers just awkwardly laughed it off. The entire workplace was seen as toxic and frankly, really mean. A rumor went around that you can't look Ellen in the eye. A former bodyguard claimed that she failed to acknowledge him and was demeaning towards others. A janitor had allegedly been fired for forgetting he wasn't supposed to look or speak at her. And a waitress supposedly got in trouble for serving her while having a chipped nail. Some guests even said they've been mistreated on the program itself. Nikki from her beauty channel, Nikki Tutorials, went on the Ellen program to talk about her recent experience coming out as transgender. She told a Dutch magazine, quote, Call me naive, but I kind of expected to be welcomed with confetti cannons. Welcome to the Ellen DeGeneres show. But instead, I was greeted by an angry intern who was a bit overworked. I was expecting a Disney show, but got Teletubbies after dark. And I'm pretty sure that Nikki didn't actually expect literal confetti cannons, but it still doesn't seem right that only certain guests got private bathrooms or that Ellen didn't even come over to say hello to her backstage. The stories about the janitor and waitress seemed to be just secondhand and just rumors, but there were a lot of accusations being hurled at Ellen and her staff. And there were those that were also verifiable. Some people seem to be expecting this in a weird way. We see celebrities and extremely wealthy folks do shady things all the time. Like when I hear about the treatment of workers at Amazon, it doesn't surprise me. It disappoints me and it's disgusting, but surprising, not so much. On the other hand, there were some Ellen fans that seemed shocked and appalled that they thought, you know, she was someone different than this. Ellen supposedly wasn't like those other celebrities that act in a prima donna or spoiled way because she built her fame on advocacy and kindness. While this was a nasty scandal to see a toxic mean workplace, it was only made worse by the outstanding hypocrisy of it, of the, you know, be kind lady who's behind all of it. Whether or not you were surprised, one thing soon became clear. This was only the beginning. Ellen's workplace was more than mean. It was dangerous. please note that this section will discuss sexual assault. If you aren't in the headspace to hear that, please feel free to skip ahead. Now, shortly after the allegations about a toxic workplace emerged, the news spread that three top producers on The Ellen Show had been sexually assaulting employees. The first of whom was Kevin Lehman, a head writer and executive producer. A former employee claimed that Lehman had asked him for a hand job or oral sex in the bathroom at a company party in 2013. Others said that he grabbed or groped production assistants even kissing them and pointed at male colleagues' crotches in the office. He'd ask, are you a top or a bottom to people that were oftentimes lower level or younger employees that seemed less prone to speaking out. As one of these former employees told Buzzfeed News, he'd probably make these comments in front of 10 people and they'd laugh because it's just Kevin being Kevin. But if you're in a position of power at a company, you don't get to touch me like that. 
So yeah, this whole boys will be boys kind of mentality around sexual assault just doesn't really fly with me. And I just think it's ridiculous regardless of where you work. I don't care if it's on the Ellen show or not. Lehman categorically denied all of this. And while he said he was horrified, some of his attempts at humor may have caused offense. He claimed that he always treated everyone with kindness, inclusivity, and respect. But Kevin wasn't the only one. The second producer named in these articles, Ed Glavin, had allegedly touched employees by rubbing their shoulders and back or placing his hand around their lower waist. He had a quote, reputation for being handsy with women in the control room and fostered a culture of fear according to former employees. Some claimed it was downright creepy, whereas others had called it a friendly hand, citing how it was messed up that they were abused at work and mistreated only for Ed to touch them sweetly as if to tell them good job. He allegedly even used a remote to shut his office door during reprimands, which honestly sounds more like a supervillain move to me than anything. And of course, the third was Jonathan Norman. One former employee claimed that Norman groomed him, giving him gifts and work-related perks, only to then attempt to perform unwanted oral sex on him. According to BuzzFeed News, three of his former employees' colleagues corroborated that they'd heard about the incident when it happened and talked about it in the following years. Norman, like Lehman, categorically denied these claims and said he'd never heard any complaint made against him. However, workers insisted there was a reason for this, that the show purposefully discouraged them from reporting these incidents. There was, quote, no such thing as confidential conversations and people feared backlash or retaliation if they spoke out. I obviously can't speak to how accurate these allegations are, but it does seem incredibly difficult to believe that this many people would tell the same story over and over again if it wasn't true. Warner Bros. thankfully took the side of the victims and fired these three senior producers. But it was Ellen's reaction that people were curious about. Ellen, the name and face of it all, what did she have to say? Well, she did apologize, but it was strange to put it lightly. Apparently, she claimed that the show was such a well-oiled machine that it sometimes wasn't as sensitive to human beings as it should be, while also calling the allegations heartbreaking. And frankly, there's something about that wording that just bothers me. Not as sensitive as they could have been. Like, I just hardly think not sexually assaulting someone is being sensitive. Even so, some people really did want to believe the best in Ellen. She claimed that she couldn't have possibly known about all of this when there's 255 employees here and there are a lot of different buildings. And even said she was targeted because I'm a woman and it did feel very misogynist. The fact of the matter is that this was a large public humiliation, but although Ellen compared it to the one she had in 1997, there was a key difference here. Back in the 90s, she faced controversy for being gay. In 2020, the controversy was for potentially turning a blind eye to workplace abuse. Ellen was the be kind lady and her show's work environment seemed to be anything but kind. Some seem to refer to this as the mask coming off or Ellen finally revealing who she was all along. However, those paying close attention knew that Ellen had never really been the be kind lady in the first place. It was part of her maybe, but cameras never showed the full picture. In fact, the real Ellen was a bit more complicated. While Ellen may have earned herself a reputation as someone who's constantly positive, no one can be that way all the time. According to the New York Times, people who remember her coming out on the cover of Time Magazine tend to forget what happened next. Her sitcom was slapped with a parental advisory warning and canceled the next season. Ellen certainly wasn't happy-go-lucky then and gay viewers even criticized her for not being political enough. Those who expected her to become this beacon of positivity all the time seemed surprised when she was just, well, human. Ellen explained, there's been times someone wants a picture and while I'm doing a selfie, they're like, you're not dancing. Of course I'm not dancing, I'm walking down the street. Though the 2020 allegations against her are the most known and well-documented, there have been a few claims throughout the years that Ellen does have a mean streak. And to be clear, I don't expect Ellen to dance for every selfie and wear a permanent smile, that would be ridiculous. But there's a difference between being human and having bad days versus being downright cruel to people. These claims about her mean streak started all the way back in the early 2000s, when a blogger known as Surgical Strikes said that they were treated poorly during their time as a writer's assistant on her sitcom. After the show Ellen ended in 1997, she had a short-lived sitcom known as The Ellen Show. Her talk show came along and propelled Ellen to success, but this little sitcom was where Ellen had allegedly treated her workers, quote, like shit. According to this former writer, when the directors would yell cut, her face would fall and she'd level a glare at the writers. Why do you keep writing these unfunny jokes? She'd ask. They'd also allege that Ellen didn't give her workers credit. Surgical strikes and the rest of her writing staff had an extremely hard job getting her through the 2001 Emmys given the events of 9-11. Her performance was incredible. And the following day, staff and crew greeted her with a hearty round of applause. Yet rather than, you know, thank the incredible hardworking team she had, she allegedly stated, 
I feel like I really reasserted myself in the industry last night. Surgical Strikes, who does still have a blog online, has been revealed as the writer Dan Tobin. While his experience with her hasn't been great to say the least, he also said she has done a lot of good in terms of promoting LGBTQ plus rights. And truthfully, I don't know why Tobin would say some of these things if there wasn't at least some truth to them because he was saying that Ellen had a mean streak long before these other allegations were even made. It's possible that he was just making it up, but he really doesn't stand to gain anything by doing so. Comedian Kathy Griffin also had issues with Ellen, claiming that Ellen would shun Joan Rivers and refuse to do a tribute for Rivers after she died in 2014. According to Kathy, Ellen called Joan Rivers' humor mean. This pissed Kathy off, leading her to call Ellen a fucking untalented hack. Ellen's refusal did feel like a slap in the face, especially considering that Ellen tweeted, Joan Rivers will always be a pioneer. She paved the way for a lot of comedians. I'm very sad she's gone right after Rivers' death. So knowing how Ellen actually felt, then yeah, the tweet does feel hollow. And frankly, I don't care one way or another how Ellen feels about Joan Rivers, but saying she'll miss her and then refusing to do a tribute did just come across a tad two-faced. But as more and more allegations around Ellen came out, people began digging up the past for evidence, trying to uncover who Ellen was behind the mask. A lot of it may seem like drama or honest mistakes, but when you take a closer look, it does seem like Ellen made some questionable, hurtful decisions. One of these moments took place in 2008 when Ellen offered Mariah Carey champagne. Carrie was pregnant at the time, but not ready to announce it yet. Ellen pressured her, pushing until Carrie finally confirmed the rumor that she was expecting. Sadly, Mariah Carey did have a miscarriage not long afterwards, and while struggling through her grief, had to share that with the world. Carrie didn't want to make the announcement in the first place because of the risk of miscarriage is much higher in the first trimester than it is in the second. She would have been spared from that extremely difficult situation if Ellen had waited or respected her judgment and kept it a secret. Carrie explained, I was extremely uncomfortable with that moment is all I can say. And I really have a hard time grappling with the aftermath. But this isn't really just a one-time oopsie for Ellen either. Like with the allegations surrounding workplace abuse, Ellen had a history of this kind of behavior around her guests. According to The Atlantic, on her program, Ellen had created ostentatious giveaways to audience members and dramatic interventions. She'd been so supposedly kind that she hasn't stood up against homophobic comedy, which personally, I don't think is particularly kind at all. If anything, I find it pretty unkind to not stand up for victims of homophobia, and you'd think Ellen would know that. Some of these so-called jokes were things like Kevin Hart stating that he panicked at the idea of his son possibly being gay and calling a person's profile picture a gay billboard for AIDS. When Ellen brought him on the show claiming to believe in forgiveness, it raised a few eyebrows. One, because Hart really seemed more defensive than apologetic, and two, because Ellen had been such a vocal figure in the fight against homophobia. So why not address how hurtful the comments were? If she had explained why these comments were so damaging and that had real difficult conversation with Kevin instead of just absolving him, then maybe fans would have felt differently. This was to many a missed opportunity to make a change, to stand for something and to teach her audience that you can fight homophobia and be kind at the same time. But as easy as Ellen was on heart, some say she hasn't really been so easy on other guests. The Atlantic states, On her talk show, she has a tendency to needle guests with mockery, respond to their ebullience with blank stares or hound them for personal details they're not willing to give. Aside from the situation with Mariah Carey, Ellen also asked Dakota Johnson why she wasn't invited to her birthday party. Dakota told Ellen's audience that that wasn't true and that the last time she'd thrown a party, Ellen was upset she wasn't invited. This time, Dakota had invited her, but Ellen didn't show up. Viewers have also alleged that Ellen loved to sneak up on staffers and startle them for entertainment, with The Ellen Show itself sharing a video of these antics on YouTube. Comedian Kevin T. Porter garnered a massive thread of stories about Ellen's behavior, promising that for every person who told him a story about Ellen being rude, he'd donate to the LA Regional Food Bank. While it would be impossible to verify each one of the 300 stories, some of them did have evidence to back up their claims. For example, Danielle Acevedo told Porter that when she was 15 years old, she'd made a bust of Ellen and sent it to her along with a personal letter. Weeks later, it was used as a prop for a game on her show and given away with money taped to the bottom. Similarly, she once roasted a fan's painting of her and her wife on the show too. Obviously, Ellen didn't have to like the art, but why bring it out on TV just to make fun of it? I won't go over all of the uncomfortable moments since it's largely subjective, but all of this begs the question, is Ellen actually an awful person or are these just honest mistakes? Well, before we continue on to try and explore and answer that question, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. After years of fine print contracts and being ripped off by large wireless providers, if we've learned anything, it's that there's always a catch. 
So when I first heard that Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month, I thought, well, where's the catch? But after talking to them and using their service for almost two years, it makes crystal clear sense. There just isn't one. Mint Mobile's secret sauce is that they're the first company to sell wireless service online only. And because they sell online only, they get to pass those sweet savings on to you. Now, like I said, I've been using Mint Mobile for almost two years at that point. I've loved my service. I don't have issues with dropped calls, text not going through, being able to access apps, internet, whatever. It's all easy. It's super easy to set up with them and my phone works perfectly fine. And all plans are gonna come with unlimited talk and text plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. And you can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. Or if you wanna go the route that I did, the scorched earth route, you can get a new number, new phone, new everything. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, make sure you go to mintmobile.com slash casket. That's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. Today's episode is also sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. And I think you guys all know the deal. Lots of us have been shopping online now, especially because of the economy, the situation of the pandemic and all that fun jazz. So as times get tougher, so does the strain on our wallets and every coupon code matters. And thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. Imagine you're shopping at one of your favorite sites, or like I've been saying recently, you've been ordering pizza for your D&D party. When you go to check out, the Honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons. You just wait a few seconds and Honey searches for coupons that it can find on the site. And if Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch those prices drop. And in my case, it saved me 20% on my pizza order, which I didn't even know that you can still get 20% off pizza coupon orders, but I also don't order pizza that often, so maybe I'm just an idiot, but the point is, They saved me 20% on my order, which was great. And it was super easy. Honey just minded its business in the corner. And then when it came to checkout, it was like, hey, do you wanna see if you could save some money? And I was like, absolutely, honey. And voila, 20%. And Honey doesn't work on just your desktop. It can work on your iPhone too. You can just activate it on Safari and save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something I don't use. And I've been using Honey for years. So get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash casket. That's joinhoney.com slash casket. So now we return to the overarching question, is Ellen awful? The thing is, I don't personally know Ellen. So like with any individual I talk about, I can't know their intentions behind their statements. And I don't want to assign malice where there may not be any. Maybe Ellen was just naive or a bit thoughtless for many of these instances. Maybe she really didn't have anything to do with her toxic workplace culture. And these three massive producers we mentioned earlier were all to blame. I don't want to rule that out as a possibility. There were celebrities that jumped to her defense as well. Katy Perry said that she'd only ever had positive takeaways from her time with Ellen and that she thought, quote, we have all witnessed the light and continual fight for equality that she has brought to the world through her platform for decades. Scott Braun called her a kind, thoughtful, and courageous human being who stands for what is right. Though again, her fight has been pretty controversial when she hasn't really stood up against homophobic remarks for the sake of kindness. Aside from celebrity opinions, there were former staff workers of Ellen's that said she'd always been respectful, such as DJ Samantha Ronson. Yet many of those that came to Ellen's aid were famous. So it's not like they would have really consistently known how the work environment was behind the scenes. At the end of the day, what upset her fans the most and the reason she became so vilified is because of that hypocrisy. Her show preached one thing, but practiced another. And I mean, let's be honest here. If you found out that the workplace environment behind the Jerry Springer show was toxic, it would maybe not be so surprising. The Ellen show was just supposed to be better than that. But after all of this, what happens next? Well, you're obviously free to make up your own mind about Ellen. Maybe some of you think her behavior is irredeemable, or maybe you don't see it as anything that bad at all. For Ellen, enough people have been disillusioned by her that it's been leading to a serious rating crash for her show. To tell you just how serious this was, from 2020 to 2021, she saw a 44% decline in viewership and the pandemic surely didn't help either. The last episode of her show aired recently after 19 years on the air. Her final guests and celebrities certainly got teary-eyed at times, witnessing the end of an era. Ellen claims that the controversy with her producers isn't the reason why she's leaving, but it sure seems like it was the catalyst for the show's final season. Personally, when it comes to my opinion on Ellen, I've got many mixed feelings. She's far from the worst kind of person we've discussed in these episodes, but it does feel like she should have known what happens in the background of her show that bears her literal name. But that's just kind of my opinion, I don't know. 
Personally, in my position, I feel that if I knew something was going on or I'd be checking in with people on my team and stuff like that and be like, hey, are you guys doing okay? Whoa, 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 hold on. There's like a creep, like what's going on? And I'd bring that up, but that's just me. And that's just my assumption from someone looking at the outside, you know, trying to observe the inside. What do you think? Is Ellen a, really a malicious person or is she just flawed and perhaps a bit negligent? I'll leave those questions and answers and thoughts to you. With that being said, that is where we're ending today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you're listening on the YouTube channel, make sure that when you are subscribing, you're hitting that bell notification so you can also be informed every single time there's a new upload. Thank you so much for joining me in a new episode of The Corporate Casket. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.